the aim of the high level uh, meeting is to bring together stakeholders from Africa, Europe, and all over the world. These include uh, people from the uh, scientific research community, uh, policymakers, uh, people working in national programs both in Europe and in Africa on HIV, TB, malaria, and indeed also on neglected infectious diseases because EDCDP intends to expand into these new fields as well. Thank you for the very warm welcome to South Africa and to this landmark EDCTP conference. The EDCTP is a brilliant success story for EU-Africa research cooperation. But much more importantly, it is a beacon of hope for millions of people across the continent. We have learned from EDCTP1 now that uh, we have a strong uh, uh, framework, we have a strong partnership. It is important now to, to make to add value to this uh, uh, partnership. But I think that most important uh, is this idea of cooperation, of collaboration uh, at all levels, north, south, 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 and north, north, uh, in the context of tackling uh, HIV, malaria, and tuberculosis, which were the main goals uh, of EDCTP1. If we are going to do anything in terms of really stemming the tide, of the epidemic, whether we're talking the epidemic of TB, um, you know, HIV AIDS and malaria, it means a lot has to be done in sub-Saharan Africa. There are two main challenges that Africa has in terms of capacity building. And this is, one is getting the competent, uh, you know, the competent researchers and research uh, supporting staff. And the second is having the right environment, optimum environment for conducting research. It's also something that very well You fits. can't do research if you don't have the capacity and the equipment. So through this project uh, supported by EDCTP, we have uh, built, for instance, in Congo, the first molecular biology lab. The major advantage is working with EDCTP is um, based on the platforms that they've already established especially the investment in the sub-Saharan Africa countries at a research centre level and capacity building from a lab site as well as just um, skill set development. We now have a clinical trial platform across sub-Saharan Africa that is ready for work. We now need exciting, innovative strategies, products, things to test so we can get out there, get uh, going and really start to find new innovation that can be put into good use and actually make a difference in the ordinary person's life. EDCTP uh, has uh, assisted to, to prepare the basement now for, you know, for building the walls we need other contributions but of course we need, we continue to need EDCTP but really with other and particular with local support. Based on the achievement of EDCTP1, we have agreed uh, that we should expand to make the best, to add value to what we've already got, to make the best out of the system that we have. The Horizon 2020 proposal still needs to be approved by the European Parliament and EU member states, but I am pleased to announce that I will propose a contribution of up to 1 billion euro from Horizon 2020 to support a second phase of the EDCTP from 2014. For our side in the European Parliament, we are doing everything we can that Horizon 2020 will be well-funded, flexible and simple, that you can make the most use of it. The German government is committed to say that up front, just like my colleague from Switzerland, we will provide a, a, a cash contribution also to the second phase of the EDCTP. The opportunity for partnership with EDCTP2 is obvious and exciting. It is absolutely essential for there to be stronger co-ownership by African governments of the next phase of the EDCTP. The pharmaceutical industry has a responsibility to help tackle this challenge. We need to get involved and make a difference rather than find reasons not to act. 
We have resources and expertise that can help. And where the traditional, traditional business model does not work, we need to take a different approach, one that is focused on partnership, collaboration, and openness. I think that um, all the time it's about partnership, partnership at all levels, partnership uh, within the member states or closer participation of industry and the private sector, potentially having newer members. It changes dynamics. So really my expectation as an African is that we need to continue working and redefining partnerships because it's through very concise and well-defined partnerships that you can achieve greater things. I see also Africa being involved more in the discovery side, not only consuming, but actually uh, looking at the potential of developing uh, drugs, developing vaccines uh, in Africa in collaboration with Europe, in collaboration with other partners, and going into uh, uh, partnership also with industry, which will actually be the uh, the key to developing products in, in Africa. I was uh, extremely pleased with the commitment of the European Commission. I am confident that in a short time this area of African participation will be further enhanced. I will therefore strongly urge the governments of the EU member states to make firm financial commitments. And I say to business large and small to foundations, to charities, to product development partnerships, to NGOs and other like-minded organizations. Join us, join the partnership, fund the partnership. Based on the commitments made at the highest level by African and European leaders in their regular meetings, cognizant of our guiding principles, I am confident that we can achieve the objectives of our partnership. In partnership, we can succeed.